Welcome to the Walton Pi. Today I'm going to show you how to integrate 1 over x cubed plus 1 from 0 to infinity over x. Now, before I get started, if these sorts of videos are helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and try and figure out how can we do this particular problem. Now for this one, this one's a little bit tricky because it looks like this is just a real integral, everything's real. But the best way to approach this one is actually through complex analysis. So what we're going to do is we need to first find a function that this is going to show up in. And so our most likely function is going to be f of z is equal to 1 over z cubed plus 1. Now notice that on the complex plane, there's going to be a few holes, or specifically poles. So we have a pole here, we have a pole here, and we have a pole here. This is going to be at the point e to the pi i over 3. This one's at negative 1. This one's at e to the 5 pi i over 3. So those are spots where we have poles. Now what we're going to do is we need to integrate from 0 to infinity. So we want to include this ray going out that way. And we want to ideally include at least one of these poles, but not multiple of them. So what we're doing is, since we have three of them, a likely path that we might want to use would be the following one. We might want to say, well, go out here, go out to some radius r, come up here, and then come in like that. So this is going to be the path that we are going to be looking at as we go on, and we are going to just go out to some radius r. That is way too thick. Let's make that a little less thick. Okay, so that's what we're going to be going through and trying to show. That's what we're going to be trying to get to. So, let's go ahead and try and break down how we're going to be setting this up. So if we call this entire path gamma sub, or let's just call it gamma. So we know that the integral over gamma of f of z dz, this is going to be equal to 2 pi i times the residue at e to the pi i over 3 of our function f. So let's go ahead and break this integral over gamma up into multiple pieces. So let's zoom out a bit so we have a few different things. So what we have is the integral over gamma, that'll be equal to the integral from 0 to r, so of our first piece, of, and this is just going to be our function um, it, with respect to x, because this parameterization is just going to be the x. So that's a 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx. So that's what we're looking to find. The next one is we're going to be integrating over the circle, circular arc. So that's going to go from an angle of 0 to an angle of 2 pi of our function. And we are going to be using our, instead of z, here z is going to be equal to r e to the i t. So this is going to be a 1 over r e to the i t cubed plus 1 times the derivative of z, that gives us an i r e to the i t dt. And the last one is going to be the integral from r to 0. And this one, the parameterization is going to be z is equal to um, e to the 2 pi i over 3 times t. And that's just going to have it track along that path. So this is going to give us 1 over e to the 2 pi i over 3 t cubed plus 1 times e to the 2 pi i over 3 dt. So now we have all of these different pieces. Let's see what we can do. So let's look at this last integral that we just wrote down. Let's see if we can be able to deal with this and figure out what is this going to be. Well, the nice thing is we can move, oh, let's shrink that down again. Okay. 
So the nice thing is we can switch the order of integration and make it zero to r if we just introduce a negative sign. So let's do that first. The next thing is this e to the two pi i over three that's out at right next to the dt, that's actually not with respect to t at all. So we can just pull that out front as well. So we have a minus e to the two pi i over three right there. And now what we have is we have one over e to the two pi i over three cubed. So that's an e to the two pi i. Wait, that's just one, so that just goes away. So we're left with t cubed plus one dt. That's exactly the same integral that we were starting with and trying to find. So what we've actually done is reduced down our problem to something that's much, much easier to deal with. What we now have is we now know that 2 pi i times the residue at e to the pi i over 3 of f is equal to, well, we have one of our integral, and we have minus e to the 2 pi i over 3 times the integral we care about plus this other thing that we have to deal with. So the integral from 0 to 2 pi thirds of i r e to the i t divided by, we have r cubed e to the 3 i t plus 1 dt. So ideally, this piece just goes to 0 and we can be able to just look at the integral is going to be 2, two pi i times the residue divided by 1 minus e to the 2 pi i over 3. So let's go through and see, can we bound this integral to show it goes to zero? So here we go. Let's look at the outer bound from zero to two pi thirds of i r e to the i t divided by r cubed e to the three i t plus one dt. Well, this is less than or equal to the integral 2 pi thirds of the bounds. So absolute value of i r e to the i t over absolute value of r cubed e to the 3 i t plus 1 dt. Well, what we can do is we can use the triangle inequality on the bottom one, specifically the reverse triangle inequality, because we want the bottom to get smaller. So that's going to be less than or equal to the integral from 0 to 2 pi thirds of, well the top modulus of i is 1, modulus of e to the i t is 1, so the top we have just r, and the bottom is going to be r cubed minus 1, assuming r is bigger than 1, but r is going off to infinity, so we can assume that, times dt, which is less than or equal to the length of the arc, so that's a uh, 2 pi thirds times the maximum value this takes, well, this doesn't actually have any values of t in it. So that's just r over r cubed minus 1, which all goes to 0 as r goes to infinity. So that means that we can actually now say we this piece goes to 0, so that means the only thing we have to deal with is figure out what's the residue. So let's go and deal with this stuff now, because we know we only have this stuff here. So that means that the integral we care about, so the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx, this is equal to 2 pi i divided by 1 minus e to the 2 pi i thirds times the residue, uh, the residue of f at e to the pi i thirds. So let's calculate the residue. Well, this is going to be equal to the limit as z approaches e to the pi i thirds of z minus e to the pi i thirds divided by the z cubed plus 1, which we will factor first as z minus e to the pi i thirds, uh, z minus e to the or z minus 1 actually, that's an easier way to write it, and then a z minus e to the 5 pi 
i thirds. Well, nice thing is that cancels, that cancels. And now we just have to plug in e to the pi i thirds. So we get that the integral we care about of 1 over x cubed plus 1 dx, this is equal to 2 pi i divided by a whole bunch of fun stuff. We get a 1 minus e to the 2 pi i thirds times e to the pi i over 3 minus 1 times e to the pi i over 3 minus e to the 5 pi i over 3, which we could go through and convert all of these to complex numbers and evaluate them all. And the nice thing is, the bottom is actually an imaginary number. So when we go through and actually evaluate that, we get this is 2 pi uh, times the root of 3 all over 9. And that is the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 divided by x cubed plus 1. Now, if you're unsure where this is coming from, remember that e to the i theta, this is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. So we have just a whole bunch of those things, all of which are angles where cosine and sine work out nicely. You can expand it out and multiply it all through, and it does simplify down to that. Now, if this was helpful, which I hope it was, Please consider liking and subscribing, share this video with other people who might have the same question, and uh, please like and subscribe. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and good luck with all of your math.